smoking. I reached for the top, yeah. But from now on, don't y'all come here ready to perform. Y'all come to watch the show. <laughs> I once wrote a book called Tough Guys Don't Dance. But that's not true. Not only do they dance, but sometimes they dirty dance. <laughs> Patrick Swayze. <laughs> I had my, uh, my uh, Golden May hot pants and, uh, and my white patent leather go-go boots because I figured that was you, what you were wearing tonight. Uh, you, you never know what I'm going to wear. <laughs> I right? know. And I never know what your hair is going to look like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this about? Uh, I'm just trying to see if blondes have more fun. <laughs> uh, and they don't. They, well, sometimes they do. Um, I, it's a new movie called Riders on the Storm that Catherine Bigelow's directing and Keanu Reeves is starring in. It's sort of an off-the-wall choice I wanted to try, sort of a Jack Nicholson choice kind of thing. Really? Character's sort of a zen, guru-like, adrenaline junkie, Jim Jones. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 give me those again. <laughs> zen, guru-like, adrenaline junkie, Jim Jones. Jim Jones from the point of view of his ability to suck people into his belief system, not that he gives them all Kool-Aid and kills them all. Yeah. So you're not a nice guy. <laughs> he actually is a nice guy. He, uh, uh, he, it's the bad guy, but you sort of, it's the kind of bad guy that you love, you know? Oh. You know, but you sort of hate to see him die. Oh, he doesn't die. <laughs> Don't tell it. Don't tell it. You got a great one on your hands here. Everybody's calling it a sleeper ghost. I hope it wakes. Up. Maybe they were just screaming because I'm talking to you and about you. Yeah. You know what, what's interesting is you all are screaming and you're making this man feel very good and he needs it. You know, this guy never liked his looks. Thought he had a messed up. What? what, what there was your eyes and your mouth and all. Tell him, tell him your, your insecurities. Tell him. Well, Hunter. <laughs> um, well, th is what? <laughs> <laughs> I hated my eyes because they were real mean and real... Have you seen my, any of my little brother's movies? Just like my little brother's... Not that I love... Donnie, I love your eyes, man. Yeah. Um, uh, they were just real mean and, you know, just real wicked. And, of course, that's the only roles I could get in the beginning were villains. And I hated the way my smile looked, even though it was like my dad. You know, it started pulling on the other side and weird. And So I gave up. Really? I now figure I'm going to look the way I look, and uh, it ain't doing me too bad in my life. Did you... <laughs> Did you ever think about doing, I mean, doing something to, like, cosmetic surgery or did, no, or not, not. maybe taping your mouth in the position you wanted it in or something? <laughs> that's a, that's a, well, I did, I've had that done a few times, but, uh, uh, that's a little narcissistic for me. Yeah, yeah, so you're gonna leave it. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with it. Good, good. Let's talk about ghosts. Uh, tell me something that Demi didn't tell me about this movie. Uh... I mean, because every person, every person probably will describe this thing a little differently. What's your take on it? Well, I, I have the first movie in a long time that I'm, I'm having a great time promoting it. You know, because you talk to hundreds and hundreds of journalists all over the world. And uh, it's exciting to be promoting a movie that you feel is going to be so good for the world's heart, you know. Mm -hmm. It's about, it's a love story, it's a comedy, it's a, it's a, it's a thriller, it's a suspense film, it's a... It's a lot of things. It's an effects movie, and the mm -hmm. most incredible effects I've ever seen. The, the, the effects are so natural, they don't take your eye away and make you look at the effects, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's about love, you know? And not many movies, if, if, usually if a movie tries to be about love, it, it, it sort of is an emotional manipulation and, and, and sort of sucks tears out of the audience, and, and I hate that. I hate, as an audience, I hate being messed with like that. Mm -hmm. And this movie is just... It's just so beautiful about the heart and about taking the love with you when you die and about that we got to we got to take care of our relationships now and 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 say the things you want to say before it's too late 
Because my dad, you know, it's like, that's my biggest thing. It's, a bit, it's the reason that, I mean, I spill my cookies every time Barbara Walters or anybody asks me, well, how did it feel when your dad died, you know? Yeah. I'm getting better with that. Ghost helped me with that. It's the first movie, first movie I've ever done that changed my soul. Yeah. You know? You know, there are other people that have been through that thing. I, I, was, um, I was out here pursuing my career when my father died. I, I don't think I ever told him I loved him. I don't think I ever had a chance to really say goodbye. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like another shot, but we don't get it. And, and that's what Ghost is about, is that maybe we'll get that shot if we believe, if we have faith. Because faith is the basis of every philosophy that exists on this planet. Whether the philosophy is true or not, it's important for us to believe that there's something more than this, this thinly veiled pain that we live in daily. And, and, and. Um, Patrick, Patrick uh, in the movie, is one of those guys, and I've joked about it in the monologue, one of those guys who can't say I love you. It's like your woman say, I love you, and you, and you say, uh, ditto. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> we all, a lot of us do that. We got to see it now. We got to get, my grandmother used to say, and mean it. Yeah, yeah, well, if you don't mean it, don't say it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if you mean it, say it. My grandmother used to say, give me my flowers while I can smell them. And, and, and that's what this thing is all about. Tell me about the love scene with Whoopi Goldberg that they cut out. No, I'm just kidding. Well, that was all awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd love to have a scene with Whoopi Goldberg, a love scene. Yeah. I always, I can't, I'm saying since this movie, if, uh, if I hadn't married Lisa, I'd marry the bit. Uh, yeah, Whoopi. <laughs> you know, she had a, a love scene with Sam Elliott in a movie that they cut out. Because they said, because when Whoopi make love, it's just too much. I bet. <laughs> I bet, you, I bet the woman will put hair on your teeth. Yes, <laughs> you, you know, if she makes love the way she talks, whoo! She'll be slapping you down. Because yeah. yeah. it, it, <laughs> she's a tough woman and, and she, she talks a lot of sex. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Wait, I don't I couldn't say this on the air, but she's, she's Wait, got they, an idea about a series called Oh, really? <laughs> oh, it's about kitty cats. <laughs> Uh, they, they might have, but we've cut it out if they I'm did. Let's take a commercial and, and, and get the audio guy in here Where with the, the beat thing. <laughs> it's, uh, Hi, how are you? I shouldn't have leaned. I think it went in this one. Oh, I don't have, uh, we'll be right back with Patrick Sweezy. <laughs> Right. Um, did you tell your wife you loved her? Always I tell her. I, ad nauseum I tell her I love her. Today? Have you told her today? She's in Florida doing a new series called Super Force for 26 weeks. Oh. Yeah. I'm not really excited about that. You know, yeah. I hate it. You know, but, but, you know, we just get used to the lifestyle and we spend a lot of money on airplanes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I tell her. I actually did tell her I love her today. She called and, and just, you know, let me know that everything's going well in her shooting and... She felt good about what she was doing and told her I love her. Yeah. Always tell her I love her. You, you, you know, you and I have never really met and got to talk. And all I know about you is your work and your interviews. Now, you seem like this real sweet up kind of guy. And I've read these interviews where you've said, uh, wait, wait, it's your wife. Hey, what's up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've read these interviews where you've said that you were an angry person. Now, is that past tense, or, or what did you mean by that? Um, I don't know. I, I've, always, I've always had this volatile stuff run around inside me. In the beginning, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd been known to back directors up against a wall that tried to make me do things I didn't believe in with my hand on their throat and the other hand on their left thigh. And, uh, yeah. and uh, that, you know, I've found... I don't know. I've always had this volatility in me, and I spent a long time trying to lie to myself or get rid of it and say it wasn't there. But you know, anything you resist persists, and, and so I finally accepted that that's okay, as long as I edit myself and don't let it turn to violence. You know, and because uh, I grew up getting the tar beat out of me constantly, and uh, uh, you know, especially with my, you know things around dancing, and then my mother had a uh, the first black dance company in the South, and uh, Debbie Allen came out of your mom's dance company. Yeah, and uh, it was real sweet. She did, she said a real sweet thing about my mom recently in a in a awards thing. It just ripped my mother apart. It was, yeah. You know, because so many times people you know get started and forget 
the people that helped him out, and, and Debbie didn't, and that was real, real sweet. Yeah. But uh, uh, I'm not sure what that stuff is inside me. I, um, you know, it's like you try to interpret it because, you know, a lot of people write about it and that there's an unpredictable edge in your work and that kind of thing. You try to play that edge mm -hmm. and manipulate that, and it looks just like that on film, and your performance takes a nosedive. Um, and th there's a stereotypical thing about dancers. People always assume they're a little light in their loafers. Um, when, you, <laughs> when you were young, wanting to be a dancer, did you have to defend yourself a lot from guys who, like, because you're a I mean, did they rag you because you wanted to dance? Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I, yeah, a lot. And I, I hated it. I even at, at 13, I learned a big lesson because I tried, I figured, well, I'll quit dancing and I'll put dancers down and be one of the cool guys, you know, and, and try to be part of the group. And they, they didn't let up on me. And that taught me a big lesson. I realized nobody will ever stop me again in my life for doing what I believe in or trying to make my dreams come true. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, don't know. Yeah. I think... I think that is the most important thing to deliver to kids because, I mean, our parents, you know, they, they're, they have to teach their kids to be realistic and, you know, because their didn't, dreams didn't come true. So they'd be remiss in teaching their kids that they can, you know, you know, and I think that's wrong about our society and parents and stuff. You got to teach kids because they're our hope. We already had our chance and we blew it, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's, they're the, they're the, the future of this planet and I believe real passionately about that. That's the reason, you know, I'm... The charity I'm involved with, big time, is anything having to do with kids. Yeah. Um, so now, you're not a fighter anymore, you're a lover, and proof <laughs> of that is a scene I saw in the movie. Oh, and, you're going to show it, aren't you? I, well, I got to. No, no, I, I watched the scene over at the screening room twice. Um, I wasn't sure what I liked it at first. And then, oh, it was, it, it, it's, it's a, I, I'll let them judge. Can I show you something? <laughs> let, me, let me show you something. Watch, watch this pottery scene. He was just a. Uh, you got to see the rest of it, though. Don't clap yet. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing. Um, he said while it was on, I wasn't sure I liked it while we were shooting it. What, what does that mean? Yeah, pretty phallic. Yeah. You know? Uh, pretty on the nose. <laughs> yeah. You know? How did you prepare for that? Uh, a lot of rehearsal with Elisa and. Uh, with your wife? Yeah, I've, I've, I've enrolled a woman in, in, in lifetime pottery classes now. <laughs> but. No, uh, no. <laughs> now that's an interesting relationship you went to your wife and said i gotta make love to demi in the movie can we practice well yeah <laughs> I, you know i think i think well i think i'm sure i'm sure demi does that with bruce too you know i mean you got i would not want and and i know bruce i i would not want my woman to come to me and say you know i'm gonna do this love scene with patrick swayze can i practice on you <laughs> so here practice on this <laughs> I don't want to be no practice toy for some other man, you know. But but that's great. You all have that relationship. Yeah, it it it, um, it was it's a very hard scene to do because, you know, it was great and exciting that to me, believe like I did that you don't have to you know suck face and jump each other's bones hardcore. That's not what a love scene should be about. You know, the power of a love scene is the communication of two human beings in the eyes. You know, and of course, there's a little other stuff going on, but but love is about that. You know, it's not just about the physical. The physical is all. You know, sex is the only way we know how to deal with strong emotions. So we, you know, and it, it, I'm really excited about this love scene because it's not for the sake of of, of getting in somebody's pants. It's it's for the you know the sake of two human beings connecting, and I think that's why people are loving it so much. It's like, did you ever see Sweet Dreams? No. The the that's one of my favorite love scenes in the world, and, and it only plays in the face. Yeah. You never see the bodies, and it is erotic and passionate, and just get your juices going. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, let me ask you this. Actors always come on, and they say, well, there are 20 crew members around, and uh, it's just acting, and I never at any point found myself realistically aroused. <laughs> um, and I, I explain this to the little lady, and... Uh, <laughs> Is that true? Are, are, is it really totally unsexual? No. It, it, well, you see, 
Big is. Well, uh, I tell you, it's, it, uh, no, it's, I, it's very sexual. Really? It, it, yeah, well, see, you, most people won't admit that. They, oh, it's acting. <laughs> no, it, <laughs> you can't, you gotta have some powerful emotion going on or it doesn't work. So it becomes very sexual, but I, you know, I've never had the flagpole rise or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Because that level, that level of fear, that, that is very scary. Uh -huh. It is scary to that level with so many people watching it. You f it's very embarrassing, yet it does get your juices going. Yeah. And, and the girl is fine. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know. Yeah. She ain't bad looking. Uh, uh, sorry, Bruce, man. you got a gorgeous wife. <laughs> yeah. uh, hi, Lisa. You're gorgeous, too, man. You're the best woman on the planet. <laughs> Let's take a commercial before we, before we get in trouble and ruin yeah. this relationship and a few others. We'll be right back with Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Movies like uh, Roadhouse and uh, Dot 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 Ken, what, uh, Next of Ken, Next of Ken, different kind of movies. What made you read this script and choose Ghost? Sort of strange because this movie, in a way, chose me. You know, I, I, it's one of the best scripts I've ever read because, see, it, you know, Lisa and I found moving into development hell when you're trying to develop your projects and you realize there's so many things involved with it ever making it to the screen. Yeah. That uh, that you find you find if a, that if a movie doesn't have heart right from the start, you might as well trash it. You might as well throw it in the toilet because it's never going to have it. And this movie had this movie had <laughs> some had, people that went to see all the police academy movies. <laughs> <laughs> Took my seventy. <laughs> this, this movie had so much heart, and and just had such good things to say to people that I had to do it. But you know, so I you know I had my agent say, yeah, give me an appointment on that. And they called back and said, you, we can't get an appointment. I went, what do you mean? They, said, they don't want you. And I went, they don't want me? <laughs> and so, um, and I said, fight, get me an appointment. I said, I don't care what I have to do. I'll, I'll, I'll read, I'll, I'll uh, whatever. do whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and, and they got me, you know, but they said that I'd have to read for it and all this stuff. And everybody's saying, oh, no, Patrick's not going to read. He doesn't have to read anymore. You know, well, I don't care about that. I didn't study all my life to be, you know, insecure about reading for something. And read. You don't have to read anymore. You know, well, I don't care about that. I didn't study all my life to be, you know, insecure about reading for something. And so, uh, and Jerry, Jerry said, uh, he says he didn't say over my dead body will Patrick Swayze do this role. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he, said, he says he said something like, uh, over my limp comatose body <laughs> <laughs> and so uh i i went in and i did six scenes and by the time i was done they were all crying going you got the role you got now he's going there's nobody else that could have done this role but patrick yeah and that's real refreshing because it gives you boost your confidence that you could go in there believe in yourself and believe passionately that you're the right guy for the job and get it you know and did yeah. you did you have movies in the past that you felt uh didn't have heart or maybe you shouldn't have done because they ripped off the public or something i mean because you seem Real into the taking yeah. care of them. That that's where you get your passion from because you know you got to fight in this business with, with with so much focus on formula and 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 money and not about you know humanity that you got you know you got to believe that you can give something back to people in order to hang on to passion and a sense of purpose about your life and caring and you know and and uh, uh, and this movie just fit that bill perfectly you know it was it was not only very mainstream and very commercial but it was the opportunity to try to go for uh one of the most difficult performances i've, I've ever had to come up with because how do you get the blend of seeing your death seeing the horror of that and the terror of that don't tell them too much don't yeah don't okay. tell them too okay. much okay. um yeah. uh, because, and, and, and to get the humor going you know yeah. Yeah. um in, in in the past, uh, you, you've done a well. No, I don't, I, I, how much time do I have? Two minutes. Let me ask you. Okay. Were you prepared for the success that you have? I mean, I knew of you before Dirty Dancing, but now we know of you. Were you ready for this? Uh, I think. I spent a long time preparing myself for it. After the first things that happened in my life, I stopped my career and buried myself back into acting classes because they wanted to turn me to a teen idol and. And uh, I hadn't worked so long to let that happen, you know. And uh, I, no, I don't think you can prepare yourself for it. I, North and South just jammed me all over the planet, you know, big time. And, and 
out the outsiders and Red Dawn and stuff, but but I I had no idea what was what you know. Dirty Dancing blew me away. wanted to wanted to drive me over the edge. And, and how about Lisa? How does she deal with all this screaming and and, the, and this kind of stuff? She was my lifesaver. She loves it, you know, because you know she 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 says I knew it all the time, you know, and and. Do she, girls get on her nerves? No. Because uh, it's very flattering to her. You know, it's very exciting because we both built this career just like we're both b trying to build her career. Mm -hmm. And uh, I consider that she's 50% responsible for everything I've done. And, uh, you know, it's like people ask me what the secret of our relationship is and that stuff is simple, man. I love this that woman to my core. Yeah. With every inch of my life. That's the key to any relationship is you don't let the friendship go out the window because you got a marriage license. It's a partnership. It's a team. You go through life, you know, together. But you, you make it sound easy. Uh, I was talking to... It is easy if you go come from that point of view. I'm not saying it's easy to use Prince Charming and Snow White and you go off in the sunset and you don't fight and hassle each other and, and it, it goes stale sometimes and you got to try to re renew it, you know? Somebody told me a story on the lot um, about a girl coming up and grabbing your ass while Lisa's standing there. What did you do? I slapped her. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just, you know, just turn around and go, listen, thanks. But, <laughs> oh, I needed that. Thanks. <laughs> but, but I think that was a little uncool, you know. Uh, would you like to say hi and talk or something? But, you know, this is my wife standing right here, and even if she wasn't, wasn't standing here, I don't think you need to do that. You know, it's, people get overzealous, and, and, but you can't put them down for it. You can't, you can't, because... They care, you know, and they're excited, and, and that comes out in strange ways sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm happy for you, man. Uh, for, for your happiness at home and in front of the camera, keep pushing. Thank you, sir. This is Patrick Swayze. <laughs>